Alrighty, welcome to Get Off Zero or hashtag Get Off Zero. Um, this is our first podcast and trial run with new software as well. So anything anything could go wrong, really. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd like to welcome Amy. Amy um, is working with uh, with me at uh, at Amber. So we're on a, a new project, basically um, bringing together a bunch of cool podcasts and and people. Um, who are sort of interviewing from different perspectives on BTC specifically. But for this podcast, um, what I want to do is sort of document people's learning journeys. Um, so sort of starting out like your, your origin story with BTC and then moving through to, you know, um, have you looked at sort of DCA to um, being sort of non-custodial to hardware wallets and et cetera. Um, but yeah, first off, Amy, do you want to tell us about yourself and what you're working on and all the cool stuff you're doing? Yeah. Um, so my name's Amy Taylor. I'm based on the Gold Coast. I'm originally from London, which you can probably tell from my accent. Um, but I, oh, God, I've done a lot of things in terms of my work over the years. I'm coming up to my 40th birthday, so I won't document everything I've done. Um, but I, prior to sort of going... Can I, can I stop you? When, when's your birthday? 17th of November. Oh, dude, I'm the fourth. Oh, right. yeah, you and it's my fortieth. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. Talk about target audience, millennials. Um, that's crazy. That's so funny. Scorpio. Well, I think our age group are, are really. <laughs> I think it, our age group are one of the most important to be educating on Bitcoin. Um, and I'll get to that. Like my origin story will definitely. My learning journey with Bitcoin definitely ties in a lot of the challenges that that our demographic faces. Um, but yeah, I pretty textbook traditional background. I grew up in the UK, uh, public education, like nothing special. I uh, went to uni because it's what you did. I quit uni because I just didn't really feel what I was doing. Um, and I just wanted to work. Um, so I actually went into the film and TV industry. Um, and I very quickly discovered that as much as I loved it and was passionate about it, it, it gave you no life. <laughs> so it was good to learn that lesson early on. Um, I didn't love it enough to be so exhausted and, and doing nothing else. Um, then I got the travel bug, spent a lot of my sort of 20s and 30s in and out of, of periods of travel, working in sales for a travel company. Um, and then it was around 2013 that I lost a family member and I was like, he was my uncle and he was kind of like a father figure. And um, I decided that I wanted to do, you know, just that something better like just I need to do something else that's going to make me happier that gives me a chance to live my life before I retire at 60 65 which is getting later and later for most of us but he was 63 <laughs> um and he didn't have children but he'd worked his whole life to retire I just remember having those conversations with him and he'd had his own businesses so he'd, he'd kind of done the one step better than just have a job and retire mm. um so in, in 2013, I got into affiliate marketing and um, learned some online skills and was doing a combination of all different things to earn money. I was one of those annoying people with my laptop in Thailand going, look how great my life is. Um, <laughs> but it did work. Um, and it gave me that freedom at, at an age where I was, I really wanted to get more travel done before I got too grown up. And um, I had bought property. I bought investment property. I was fortunate enough oh. to be given a copy of Rich Dad, Poor Dad um and the small amount of savings oh, that i had sorry to cut you off there he, he yeah. just tweeted um yesterday um what's his name Richard, Robert uh, Kiyosaki. Yeah, yeah yeah um that he'd prefer to own bitcoin than and property. gold and silver i saw that he's no longer like, preaching real estate or property yeah i was like i know oh my God, that's it's huge <laughs> i was actually just thinking about that on my when i was getting ready and um how like i think when you're in a space of learning about any particular topic, it's very easy to forget you're in a bit of an echo chamber. Yeah. Um, but to me, he's like one of the sort of gods of financial education. But even even with his huge following and the number of books he's sold, it still just seems to be something people don't act on as a rule. So, yeah. you know, a small percentage of the people in Bitcoin probably actually act on it or that have heard about it. Um, but yeah, cut to that. So I had bought investment property, but only in random small places in regional UK with the small amount of money I had, because there was no way I could afford to, to buy in London. Mm -hmm. um, so I had that kind of understanding of making your money work for you, because just the fixed salary is never going to be enough. 
um, to sort of live any kind of decent life. And I know we're both from Western countries and somewhat privileged, but um, I feel like we're living through a time where that could all get turned on its head and countries that don't consider themselves particularly privileged could soon be the ones that are calling the shots. Um, I agree. Yep. But that's a rabbit hole that we can get into. So yeah, <laughs> my, my background was kind of, I, I've been doing my own thing or living on my own terms and I'm not afraid to try new things. And I've, I've done a variety of like affiliate marketing, consulting, social media management, all sorts of different things in the online space. So I've owned my time and owned my geographic freedom for a while. Um, and I recently in the last couple of years got into the coaching space because I just realized like, I'm at that point where I know how to make money. Um, I have made a lot of money, but I've never managed it well. So I haven't got a huge amount to show for it. Um, I've got a decent net worth for someone my age, but it's all about income, right? And and the whole net worth conversation just is losing losing any gravitas when the cost of living's going up so much. So again, another rabbit hole. But yeah, I, I'm in a good position for someone my age. I've done well, um, but I just, a couple of years ago, I was like, I've got to that point where I wanna do something a bit more meaningful. Um, and start doing what I believe I'm best at, which is um, coaching. So I was doing a lot of coaching in digital marketing, which was fine. I did know what I was talking about, but it was just boring me. Um, and then, to be honest, I got I got quite depressed doing it during COVID because all these business owners that I was talking to were just so down and struggling. Yeah. And I just I wanted to help, but it was just that kind of. I need to protect my own energy and mental health here yeah. <laughs> because they were just ruined. And it, that was hard. That was, it was just too hard for me. Wait, wait, there was so many, so many in yeah. Victoria. Oh, and being in Melbourne, you'd have been so exposed to it. It's um, nuts. nuts. So we were quite fortunate in Queensland. It wasn't quite as rife as it was in like the UK. And I've got friends in the UK with businesses and it was just, it was, what did you say? These people were just being wiped out. Um, so yeah, I, I turned away from that and was like, I, I enjoy the coaching aspect, but what do I want to coach in? And I just looked at my journey and if there's two things that have served me most in my success is in what I have done previous was just know how to be yourself and not give a crap what anyone thinks and, um, and, and really understand money, both personally and from a business perspective. And those, those two things were what kind of got me boiling it down to this be you get paid brand it's like if we learn nothing else in school just teach us that and we'll be okay um so that's that's kind of the brand that i'm going under for my coaching and i, I got certified with gallup clifton strengths which is a modality that i really believe in um so that's kind of the foundation for my coaching but i like variety in my work and and being able to help people with those two things is what bitcoin kind of brings together for me because i think for our age group and millennials gen gen z gen y whatever each side of us um it just is both an opportunity to get ahead um but also kind of do your bit for leaving the world a better place so yeah. so that's where i'm at so in, in my coaching now if i'm walking through business stuff or personal stuff and coaching people through their relationship with money i will always tie it to bitcoin not not to orange pill anyone or amber pill people into you know going all balls deep in it like I have but just <laughs> yeah, at yeah. least understand it enough to understand that having no exposure to it is probably a risk get off zero yeah <laughs> correct look at that segue perfect um that's really cool <laughs> that, there's a lot of bleed over into yeah some of the the stuff that I've been working on so uh to give you my my sort of background um back in 2014 um, started building the the world's first Bitcoin school. So I was working in a primary school, and um, the yeah, it was really cool. We got a twenty one BTC donation to the school. Um, after it was it's an interesting story actually. So we actually reached out to two universities that um, that I later learned were um, it was Andreas Antonopoulos who actually gave us the BTC in the first place. So it was like two. We, we sent away and said, "Can you guys send us enough to buy some Raspberry Pis?" It's a primary school, right? So for some the kids school, lightning nodes. No, nah, well, this is even before building nodes. Just like mini computers, just so kids at yeah. my school to demonstrate the university over in. It's one in the UK and one in um, in Greece, and um, basically just to demonstrate they could send money to kids in Australia to or to buy computers for kids over here. Anyway, so they did that, and um, it was really cool. And principal was all for it. 
the bursar at our school didn't like it because she didn't understand it and like called the department of ed and said we can't do this you can't use pickles like everything was up up in arms over, over that i'm like what it's like 30 dollars. are you kidding me like we, we can't buy computers for school children because you don't know what money is like this is crazy right. um so and but these to the, are the people teaching children <laughs> yeah, exactly so yeah to the, but to the principal's credit he was like no nah, we, we'll, we'll pursue this we kept kept going to the department saying, look, this is going up in value. Um, so it was like literally two years of so 2014 to 2016, battling 2014, them to be. you had yeah, Bitcoin for a yeah, school. Wow. For a school, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I was like, well, it's, and I kind of started out saying, do you want to be Australia's first Bitcoin school? And he was like, yeah, what's that? <laughs> like, <laughs> I had no clue. Um, but it was awesome. So we were like running financial literacy programs for the kids and um, then 2016 got a 21 BTC donation from a philanthropist who came from America. And we ended up building a student centric learning space for that. So like four shipping containers decked out and we, because the department, like they said, yay for the, you know, minute amount that we got, you know, like 21 BTC, we don't know what to do. So we ended up setting up a fund and um, Andrew, who was the philanthropist, who, who unbeknownst to me, had been to like 250 schools across America and I was like volunteering at the Bitcoin Center in in Melbourne at the time, and they're like, "Go check out Kieran's school. Like, I think you'll dig it." And he like stayed. He came and stayed all day, and like stayed for Coda Dojo, which was like a program I was running after school. It's like, Jesus, guy really likes the school. <laughs> um, and yeah, at the end of the day, he's like, "Dude, I want to give you twenty one BTC to build that learning space you're talking about out of the shipping containers." I'm like, "What?" So we did that. And he set up a fund and the kids just voted. So he used like another blockchain mechanism for the kids to vote on how all the funds were allocated for the space. So it was like, it was kind of a positive that the department said no, because we were like, all right, we'll let the kids like decide. So we this student-centric learning space. So yeah, a lot, of, a lot of bleed over into what you're talking about and like having that financial literacy from a young age, I think is really important. And it, I mean, I dread to think about how much Bitcoin I've lost giving to school kids over the years. <laughs> it makes me sick oh, to think of it. In, like, in custody, yeah. And they would have lost it, like most of it, I would say, like private keys and all that. But the learning experiences from that, like you, you kind of can't replace. But yeah, mm. I think I think you're absolutely right. Like having that financial literacy component um, from a young age is is so key. And what, what I'm working on now, another another project is called the School of Bitcoin. So we've got a, a group of, you could call them coaches actually, um, but basically we're doing tutoring. So over the Lightning Network, and I'll, I'll, I'll send you some links because you, you might actually um, be able to implement it for your Oh, I've got so well. many questions already, but I don't want to throw you <laughs> off track. <laughs> um, but there's a thing called Vita, so Vita.page, and you can actually do tutoring or, or messaging and, and video conferencing over Lightning. So you're getting paid in Lightning. Um, as people are, are talking to you in, in sats, yep. Um, and it uses Strike, so it means the person on the other end can actually sign up with their credit card and it yep. converts it to you. <laughs> it's, a, it's amazing. We, it's a killer app. I can't app. wait for Strike to roll out everywhere. It's here. It's here. That's but, all we need. Well, I mean, for that, that's all we need to do. It's a killer app. So I'll, I'll set oh. you up. It's so it's so cool. But if you want to check it out, yeah, the school of Bitcoin.com. And we've got like all our we're doing open curriculum and all sorts of stuff. So feel I'm free so glad we've met. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's anyway, a lot of I've... synchronicity with uh, future <laughs> visions that I have myself. <laughs> I've derailed the, the conversation. But anyway, um, now there's a lot, a lot of bleed over there. And I think, yeah, I mean, there's, there's heaps of stuff I can share with you on, on that for coaching specifically. But anyway, back back to Get Off Zero. So, um, yeah, your your origin story, I suppose. So, like, the, the first time you heard about Bitcoin and – actually, sorry, before that um, – the first time that you questioned money, when when would that have been? Was it sort of after BTC <laughs> oh. or before? Well, how long have you got? Um, <laughs> I can give you my life's trauma as a child. Um, well, I guess in terms of hindsight, it's always easy to look back and go, I was questioning it then as a kid. Like my parents divorced um, essentially over financial stress. Oh, um, yeah. Obviously, that's a, a more colourful story that I, I won't go into here, but... I have just I have very clear memories um, as a result of doing kind of counselling and and personal development work around. Oh yeah, that makes sense now. But um, I guess the first adult wake up call I had was um, 
when my uncle died. Um, so that was the family member I lost in 2013, where I kind of went, oh, that's a bit lame. Like he was just getting ready. He'd worked his whole life and was getting ready to retire. And it's like, oh, well, now he's dead. So that was really not worth it. You need to live your life now. So, and then we, we had to take care of his estate. Um, he had a property that had a charge on it um, from his ex-wife. Uh, um, and everything's fine like it was all, we're all on good terms but it gave me an insight I had previously owned a house with my ex fiance so I had an insight into property and mortgages and interest rates and the, the kind of stuff around being smart with finance and not using your own money and that kind of stuff and, and investment property that I'd done before but I, I started questioning you know well he's worked his whole life and he had to work until he was 63 and he was exhausted and that killed him essentially because of various stresses, I believe, with, with cancer. But also, um, fast forward four years after that, my stepfather and my grandmother passed away within eight months of each other, which left my mum on her own. I mean, both of them were in their 80s and 90s. So it wasn't, okay. you know, it was, it was a sh one of them was a shock, but yeah. by the by it's not a grief story but my mum was basically living with with the two of them so there were three of them under one roof all of them were on the the British pension the state pension and they were as far as I was aware they were you know they were comfortable there was no no reason to question anything but then two of them have now passed away and my mum's basically living under the same roof with the same living expenses um really um and she came to visit me in Australia and we sat down because we were getting ready to sell the house because she was going to downsize. And we sat down and did her costs, basically. And I was just like, um, is the state pension your only source of income? She was still working two days a week because she enjoyed it. But this is like someone in their 70s who doesn't sh shouldn't have to work. And she worked because she enjoyed it. But it was also mm. a significant amount of money to, to someone in that situation. So long story short, it was just you cannot live on this amount of money. Yeah. Um, and this was four or five years ago. So already it's 50% more expensive. Yeah. And that's mostly from the last two years. But it was that was my real wake up call. I was like, you know, holy shit. <laughs> I'm essentially going to end up financially responsible for my mum long before that should be necessary mm. um and and yes she owned her house but there was a there was an estate to be sorted my stepfather had his own children and you know what she was going to be left with and what she was living off of was just not enough um so that was my wake up call really um wow. and then i was i was into crypto not bitcoin <laughs> um at the end of 2017 through, I guess, being in the digital space, I had a lot of people around me who were very forward thinking and futuristic and tech, understood tech and, and this rising industry. Um, so that was my first introduction to, to the crypto space, which is probably a separate question. But yeah, my wake up call was my aging parents. Wow. Realizing, you know, they're already in a pretty crappy situation if cost of living keeps going the way it is this is not good did you um, did you understand what inflation was like not at that point just, you didn't i mean know, I, it's just I, like... not at that point in detail and i still yeah. I, I mean i'm still no expert in explaining macroeconomics but i understand it enough to go this is royally screwed up no it's a ponzi scheme that's yeah <laughs> <It's easy>. and <laughs> i mean but the thing is is i think especially our age group um, and i would encourage any millennial or someone our age with in my situation i mean i don't have children yet i may have children i don't know but we're in this situation where we're we're, we're at the most expensive point of our lives yeah where we might be raising children and we have aging parents it's like oh this is fun <laughs> <laughs> you know there's a lot of financial implication to that but also just your time and, and stress and responsibility and it's it's kind of like well where do we go from here so i think a lot of people our age can relate to oh our parents bought a house for 50 grand in the 70s and but even you go back another generation their parents bought a house for five grand it's like yeah. why is no one ever it was 30 dollars <laughs> yeah, yeah. alone yeah so that yeah. that was my starting point and no i didn't so no i didn't understand inflation but now i understand it enough to go right okay i know the topics that i get and i'm passionate about and, and what it leads to can I explain it in great detail? No, I mean, it's, it's a full-time job to keep up with Bitcoin, let alone all of the different topics it covers. Um, and I want to get a better understanding of all those things, but I'm trying to stay in 
not stay in my lane, but stick to the things that I know I can confidently talk about and that affect people on a human level, Yeah, um, yeah. which is all of it. But yeah, so I'm still, I'm still sort of listening to podcasts and getting up to speed with macroeconomics, but the world is just changing so fast. It's, it's impossible to keep up. You can't, yeah, you can't, you can't keep abreast of everything, but um, yeah. So, so sort of moving forward into your, like the, the first time you heard about BTC, and so I guess it was crypto first and then BTC. Is that, is that sort of the yeah, timeline? Yeah, I, I will name and shame because they don't exist anymore. But I got tied up in the US iTech um, way. I don't know if you. I don't I, even know what that I, is. What is Again, that? echo chamber. I assume everyone's heard of it. But if you've been BTC only from the get go, <laughs> good for you. Um, it was one of these Ponzi schemes, uh, network marketing schemes. But I was introduced to it by people that I fully trusted and they were, do- they, you know, they were absolutely doing something they thought was good um as we all do i think when we get excited about something but um this thing turned out to be one of the many many scams and well i don't was think it, it was, was it a like scam. A, was it like an ico no they did run an ico later um but it was essentially um put your dollars into btc packs um i didn't even know what bitcoin really was at that point i just knew that if you bought this you got a return and then you got extra for introducing people to it. So <laughs> they, they I mean, they just, they, they would have gone nuts and, and they had loopholes. And I don't, I like to think the best of people until proven otherwise. And I don't know that they were intentionally ripping people off, but there were many loopholes that it was a bit like the Terra Luna situation. There was just a tech loophole that got exploited, or at least that's what I like to think. Mm-hmm. Um, and because everybody, the people that were making the money are just everyday people getting into MLM marketing schemes, you know, like they are with, with a lot of legitimate businesses. Um, and it just, it all eventually disintegrated and I lost about 10 grand Australian, which in the grand scheme of things is not a huge amount, but at the time it was enough to feel sore. Yeah. Um, but, and I, and I had bought altcoins and a little bit of Bitcoin, but that was my introduction. And then I kind of got all that hurt. Forgot about it, but kind of kept listening to to the Bitcoin conversation. Um, and it wasn't until my mum had this situation two years ago, sort of mid cycle, I guess, in terms of the halving cycle. So it was around yep. the beginning of 2018 um, where we were having this conversation about, OK, what are we going to do with your money? So we put a little bit into some property investment with a partnership that went wrong. Um, we still made money, but it was like it was like all signs were pointing to property is not the way to go right well, it's, now. It's to, to, <laughs> just to interject there. It's so stressful, property, isn't it? Like there's stuff it, you have people to do. have no idea how much no. admin is involved. Yeah, and it's like yes, you can make a lot of money if you're happy sitting in front of a phone, a spreadsheet, and a tax man on a regular yeah. basis. Yeah. And, you know, and it's, you're talking 10 years of work to get to a point where it's a healthy income with all of that work outsourced. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'd learned that already, but because of her age, I was like, okay, risk, reward, what's the what, what's the go here? Anyway, we, we, we did some money into property, and again, it was a lot of admin, so I wasn't really doing as much of my work, and... I didn't care because once COVID hit, I was quite happy to not be coaching and talking to people. But it was around mid to late 2018 that I started really paying attention to Bitcoin. Didn't put any money in. I I put a lot of money in, um, both on my mum's behalf and my behalf around the start of 2020, just before just before it crashed (laughs) for COVID. And then and then I kind of put a bit more in over the course of a year, then I sold a property and and now I'm very, 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 very exposed. Irresponsibly long, as I think a lot of people say. Um, Yeah. But now my my journey along, uh, you know, it it's been all about the education and, and I do, I did, I was holding some altcoins and I, I don't, I don't talk about it too much because I think even with a small audience, you have a responsibility to, you know, get people to buy Bitcoin first and understand that that is money. Everything yeah. else is tech speculation. And I, I think there are some great projects out there. I, I'm not a Bitcoin maxi, but I do think if you're going to get into this space, it is the first thing you buy and understand. Yeah, I, I think you're right there. Like there's there's cool projects, um, two that I like, uh, Handshake and um, Library, so LBRY. 
and they're both proof of work and they're built. They're basically forks of BTC, really. Um, but I don't look at them as like um, investment schemes i suppose like the the the, there's two concepts so one's like basically creating decentralized dns so dns is domain name service so like you know you rent your domain name from ican they want to do away with that and make it decentralized i'm like that's perfect one simple task using proof of work i'm like we could probably roll that into the btc blockchain like down the track so i think the further you go down the educational rabbit hole with bitcoin it's very hard to argue anything needing to be on a different blockchain but i do think that's going to take a lot a lot of time um and it's going to take a lot of sort of marketing to the masses because they care about their money first yes Um, exactly right and and then you have to have the argument well what what kind of things have to be or should be decentralized and i think money is absolutely the first priority Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um Social media, maybe there's always yeah. it's it's a great debate, and this is what I love about this space. You know, it's there are maxis out there, and if if we're having the money conversation, no arguments from me. Like Bitcoin mm. is the way, yeah. um, and I think that is the the pressing issue that needs to be talked about to get people educated. Outside of money, it, 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 if it were a free market, I think <laughs> there are some projects that have their merits. Um, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, you know, for, especially for the financial space. But it's, it, I think we're here to really educate first and foremost on on money and Bitcoin and PTC. Well, and like I, I don't even look at them like I was saying is it like investment schemes. I think like energy transfer to fund projects. So it's like you're donating it, right? So it's like I like this thing. Cool. I like that too. Yeah, <laughs> it's not or the like... peer to peer aspect. Yeah, um, yeah. But but again, that that's arguably done on Bitcoin. Um, yeah. I, and that's the thing, like I, I, energy is one of the topics I am trying to get more understanding of. Um, you know, I can see a time where the house I'm renting actually at the moment, we're on solar and I never really got it. I was talking to my partner about it and it's like, oh, right. So that we produce more than we need and it just gets sent back to the grid for free essentially, because then they on sell it with more markup to someone else. And you just <laughs> yep. think, well, when Elon Musk turns around or someone similar just turns around and says, well, just stick the your surplus into a battery which i know there's arguments around all of it this is an ongoing debate but if the solution is and i can see this happening if we all have batteries to store our surplus energy and it's done on bitcoin and we just go well i'm not going to send mine back to the grid if you need a bit next door you can have yes. mine or yep. across time and space to the other side of the world which my right. sailor talks about so it's it's coming like it's happening the, the infrastructure is being built and tesla are the the front runners but there's other companies doing it so yeah it's and it it, and this is the thing once you once the light bulb goes on and the dots start to join your brain just kind of goes oh well they could do that they could do this they could do that and but it's just getting people over the line on this money thing um first first because so that you know that unfortunately that is the only way people are going to care um fix the money fix the world yeah. 100%. I did have a t-shirt saying that, but um, I've got my plan B one on today. <laughs> oh, said... very cool. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So yeah, switching gears from that. Um, so your origin story. So DCA. So you kind of alluded to sort of dumping cash into BDC at the top. Yeah. Um, not but the top, think, but not know, the bottom either. Close, close enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, so DCA, so dollar cost averaging, uh, for people who don't know, I think is a really cool tool. And that's that's basically uh, Amber um, and their product is like the easiest way to do that. Uh, it was really funny, actually. Like I was, <laughs> I was having a breakfast with mum the other day and um, she's been DCAing with uh, CoinSpot. I was like, she's like, I was like, oh, wh- why are you using this? So I swapped her over to Amber. <laughs> Literally, I was like, what? And like, the fees are so high. I coins put. I was like, yeah, no. Um, okay, so, so that, can I just make a point on the whole fees thing because I know yeah, yeah. that it's going to be a question, especially for anyone who is already a Bitcoiner who um, will look at Amber or, or any anything that's like one percent or it's like that's too high. That's too high a fee. It's like, hang on a minute. Let's just do the maths. And this this is financial education to a degree, but it's more yeah. basic maths around valuing yourself as a human being, which is a lot of what I talk to people about in my coaching. It's like, 
if we're talking about a hundred bucks a week, and I, I know a lot of people think, oh, I can't afford to do that. It's fine. Okay, fine. But let's just use a hundred because it's a round number that people can hopefully understand. If your fee is 1%, we're talking about $1 to completely automate your saving Bingo. Yeah. into yeah. Bitcoin. Yeah. Comple like I'm happy to pay someone or an app a dollar to not Absolutely. think about it ever Absolutely. again, no, that, that was <laughs> knowing my point. that I'm growing my wealth exponentially. <laughs> exactly. Well, that, that was my point with Coinspot, Value your right? time. <laughs> like Coinspot's more expensive and she was doing it manually. And you have to do it manually. I know. <laughs> like, I know. It's crazy. I know. Um, so, yeah. Like, people, people, people listening, please <laughs> value your time enough to understand that 1% might sound high if you're comparing fees across the board, yeah. but $1 on every 100 to outsource your admin. Not think about it. Is, yeah. is just worth it. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, moving exactly. on. <laughs> well, and, and as low as like five bucks. So, mom's doing like, you know. Um, 10 bucks exactly. a week or something so it's and it's relatively the same it's still one percent but if you want yeah. to do five bucks a month just to suss it out get some skin in the game watch it go up and down like it's it's by far yeah i mean use Easy. the calculator on the amber website as well to to just oh yeah it's so cool hypotheticals so cool. of if you'd started <laughs> sooner yeah it's great so really dcaing early so yeah i'm yeah getting off zero uh, are you off zero dca do, do you actually dca yes i do so i the further I went down the rabbit hole in 2020, I was like, oh, I'm going to play a little bit of the altcoin game on projects I trust. And I, I bought some education on that um, and connected with some really cool people in the space um, who I'll be hopefully reaching out to for, for this podcast, um, uh, for my podcast with Amber. Um, and I, th there was no question that DCA is, or dollar cost averaging is the way to be able to sleep at night and continue with your life and focus on whatever it is you're doing to earn a living and hopefully increase that so that you can continue DCAing. Um, because when you really do look back over the data, um, it's one thing to say, oh yeah, you can get massive gains on other projects. It's like, okay, but you're missing the point. Yep. Again, you need to understand money. And what I call this that is. I call that a fiat mindset. <laughs> yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to make huge gains, and and the crypto space is a great place to do that if you know what you're doing, if you're educated, if you understand Bitcoin first, and Bitcoin is your safety net if that goes wrong. So is the because casino. It, <laughs> it is, but it's like, but Bitcoin is also the pair. Oh, and I didn't know this two years ago, when you go onto an exchange, um, if you want to play the altcoin game, fine, um, not on Amber, but if you want to do that, a lot of, if you get stuck in a project, a lot of them, you can only trade back into D, uh, into BTC. Yeah. Um, so if you're stuck and you're going, holy crap, this is tanking, you're going to have to sell it for Bitcoin. Um, so at least, you know, you come out with something that is going to grow back. Whereas you're, if you, lose it you lose it or if you trade it back into dollars or a fiat currency it's dead immediately yes. um so yeah that was the other lesson i got through 2020 yeah um, about just have bitcoin first uh, i i also dca every week on, on autopilot with amber um and then i can now focus on other things because when i was playing the altcoin game or playing the trying to buy buy low sell high and make profit and there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> it, it was a full-time job to have yeah. three strategies it was yeah, a yeah, full-time yeah. job and and you can be a full-time crypto investor but just get educated first well and, and you gotta you first. gotta be awake 24 7 right <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you need to have nerves of steel which most yeah. of us do not <laughs> um <laughs> yeah well that's cool so so on that on that same topic um getting off zero custody so are you still custodial or have you, have you sort of moved your your wealth uh to your own own wallet yeah, no, I travel around through airports feeling very smug with that I've got my uh, net worth on a small stick nice. <laughs> where they tell you you can't take more than 10 grand across the border. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a combination. Like, obviously, uh, my DCA money, um, I don't withdraw uh, from Amber every week. Um, I, I sort of let it build up and then just pay the one withdrawal fee. Um, but, no, I'm... I'm non cust I always get these back to front. Non custodial is I'm looking after it, right? That's right. Yeah. Don't custody it with anyone else. Yes. And especially at the moment, like I I was using BlockFi. I was using um I hate saying this out loud, but Celsius? I was using Celsius for a while, but I got out, <laughs> thankfully. Um, I was I was as well actually and I got it. Uh, yeah. I had like 
I, you know, they like they listed everyone's names. It's so funny. So you can look your name up, and it'll show you like how much you had. It's like public information. Oh, I, I didn't have much on there, but I yeah. had five dollars. It's frightening. <laughs> Took it out it's just frightening. in time. It is. Um, so yeah, and I, 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 that spooked me. And I do try. I think I actually think Blockfire are a great company, and I trust the founders. But it's just we're just in a space that's not regulated. So at the end of the day, yet yeah. at the end of the day with all the best intentions some of the best founders out there could find themselves in a really tough spot and and again <laughs> they have to save themselves first or to a degree and anyone who's never done business for themselves before might not understand that but this is the whole Austrian economics free market thing right there's consequences um yeah, and that is yeah. something that the current financial system doesn't have they're just the worst run business in the world. There's no accountability. There's no, um, there's no consequences for screwing something up. So that spooked me. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to get my hardware wallet and put, for now. Um, and yeah, and continue to on the dips, just keep putting more of my fiat money in uh, wherever possible um, and wait. And again, if you've got Bitcoin and you want to play the altcoin game, you can. You've got you've got the trading pair. I, I don't want to sound like I'm encouraging people to do that, but it is. <laughs> I'm just so conscious that people that aren't even in Bitcoin yet will be like, oh, but what about Ethereum? What about Monero? What about me? And yeah. it's like, what do you what are you trying to achieve? Because ask anyone trying to get out of the Ukraine right now, you can probably stand a better chance of surviving and, and getting across the border with your wealth intact if it's in Bitcoin. Exactly. Um, exactly right. And I heard, uh, who was I talking about? I think it was Robert Breedlove. I could listen to him all day. Yeah, um, awesome. Talking about back in the day, uh, or it might have been on the Bitcoin standard now, Nellie Bly. There's a story about the lady who circumnavigated the, blo the globe at the beginning of the 1900s, I think it was, using <coughs> Bank of England paper money oh wow um and so it's not to say clearly that's not the standard anymore but yeah. the point being if if something has been adopted enough in enough places you can you can survive you can trade you can buy things you can cover your basic needs and, yeah. and that is bitcoin like you're not yeah, going to take like your... technically you could you could travel yeah. now and do that yeah. for sure you're not uh, going to be able to feed yourself in africa with ripple like no that's right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. No, yeah, it's not going to happen. Or the Aussie dollar, for that matter. Uh, <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> I can um, barely feed myself with the Aussie yeah, dollar right. at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, speaking of of uh, being your own custodian, um, hardware wallet. So you've obviously got a hardware wallet. What's what's your what's your uh, your choice for, uh, ledger. for hardware? Ledger? Yeah, yeah I cool, use cool. a ledger. I've got a couple of nano S's from back in the day. Yeah. Um, and I've got one of the X's as well now, just because it had more space um, for random, I'm ashamed to say, shit coins that I did have a balance of at one point. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I actually prefer the old one, the old school nano S um, yep. with the buttons. Yeah. <laughs> I find the new one, it's like it's like iPhones, there's no button, it's sometimes not always a good thing, but yeah. Yeah, and it. apparently the, the new one, I've got it as well, I've got basically every type of hardware wallet just to play around with, but yeah, um, yeah, the, the newer one has a battery, so the battery, I think, dies ah. apparently, so yeah, that's like the issue that they have with them, so the old one is, is probably better. Um, so on that note, uh, for hardware wallets, are you running your own node? Do you know what? I've got all, no, not, I'm not running my own Bitcoin node. Answer that question. I have all the parts for a lightning node in my wardrobe, which awesome. I ordered last year um, online, but I was stuck in New Zealand and they got sent here. Oh, um, right. So it's on my list to set that up, even though I've now forgotten everything I need to do, but I'm sure I'll find, I'm sure you could help me or the School of Bitcoin could help for me sure, find two plans sure. to get my own. What? I'm a member with Zion as well, the, oh, cool. the Justin Resvani's social network. Awesome. I don't, I, I, I will probably start putting the podcast um, episodes on there. Um, yep. So I do, I do have a lightning node that I pay for um, essentially with Zion, but I do want to pull all those parts out. They're probably out of date now, but they'll, they'll be enough and start. Should definitely definitely that. get on the, the podcast index as well. So that's podcasting 2.0, um, value for value. And basically you get, there's an app called Fountain. 
Uh, there's a bunch of them, but Fountain's probably the best one. And basically, you get streamed sats as people are listening to the podcast. Wow. Um, and somehow, I don't know how they do it, but you get paid in sats for listening as well. It's, like, it's incredible. So wow. it's 100% the way well, forward. So That sounds a bit like Zion to a degree. I mean, Zion is growing. It, it, the vision is to be a, a whole social network. I, I think of myself as just an investor in Zion with my monthly subscription at the moment. I very rarely go in there, but I follow Justin <laughs> and, and love what they're doing. So, And this is the thing. Once you're in the space and you get it and you kind of you hear more and more being built on Bitcoin or built on Lightning, yeah, it's hard to sort of imagine. Well, what can't they do? Like, yeah. why why would all these other blockchains be required? Um, That's right. And and they ha it's not to say they don't have a use, um, but again, just for anyone listening who's got that question, well, why Bitcoin when I can make more money over here? It's like, okay, first of all, you need to understand what you think is money. It's the first thing you need to do. <laughs> yes, and then, exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. Um, well, that yeah, that's interesting. I, I as soon as you said Ledger, I thought, like, now nah, you're probably not running a node yet. So once you get your node up, what, what's the hardware for the node? What's the hardware for the node? What? Like what? 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 <laughs> uh, oh, I've got a Raspberry Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi four. Uh, so did, it, yes. did it come like pre-installed with anything, or it's just a oh, kit to put together? Aaron, I don't know. Not sure. All right. <laughs> I can help you with that. <laughs> like I say, it arrived here when I was stuck in New Zealand when the borders were closed last gotcha, year. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> it's well, just a pile of boxes in my cupboard. I'm like, oh, yeah, that'll, that'll get done one day. <laughs> I've, I've run a bunch of them, but my favourite Citadel. So Citadel is a fork of something called Umbral. And basically, oh, Umbral, that rings a bell. Yes, Umbral yeah. was who I was going to be going to to learn the thing. Yeah, yeah. Or well, Citadel basically just – it's – more sort of privacy focused and I really like the interface and basically you can just install apps and it's quite quite intuitive like that what you can do with it so I highly, re highly recommend yeah. it um so it's like security and usability sort of together great um, oh, you'll be the first person I'm calling when I'll maybe yeah, just call you up here to set mine up because I won't have the patience I'll be like my mum when she asks me about tech stuff I'm like oh this is one step too far that's always torture yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so yeah with that um i have a saying of sort of get off zero hash rate as well so as you know the hash rate for the network is um obviously like how people and btc um, through mining but it also secures the network so there's a philosophy where basically um x amount of btc that you have you should be mining sort of altruistically as well right so like yeah. having some sort of hash rate to contribute to the network now there's been a number of companies uh popped up compass is probably the the biggest one that's gone under i was actually with them as well um but got my hardware off them just in time thank god um I'm actually i actually mining. didn't know that i'd heard that they were having issues but i haven't kept up they've completely gone yeah i think they're they're done for completely um yeah, which is sad because it's it's a cool model. And in fact, we're looking at doing something similar in Australia specifically uh, with a company called Alpha Hash Rate. Um, so the idea is like green mining with uh, solar and shipping containers awesome. and immersion mining. So immersion mining is basically taking the hardware that's really loud and putting it in, in this specialized oil so it makes no sound, very little heat. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's ne next to... Next to completely green, um, it's just still kind of reliant on the grid when the sun's not up sort of thing. Um, but, yeah, really, really cool. So, like, renting out space for people to, to, to utilise that. But I'm actually mining at home, so I've got, like, small miners here. We've got solar and I've got the Tesla battery out the back. Oh, um, dream. Which is great. Yeah, it's, it's so cool. But, um, yeah, having that, I think it's really empowering. And it's something magical as well, right? Like, so when you're, you're contributing to the network, it's hard to describe until you kind of do it. But you're contributing to the network and then you, you're getting sats for, for doing that as well. And you're like, oh, cool. Like you really feel good about doing that. It's like the it's like earning BTC as well, right? It's the same same sort of thing, but maybe even better. Um, have you got any hash rate? <laughs> no. No. So that's, I mean, if, if my partner and I were buying a house, um, which eventually would like to, but again, our, our, my mindset certainly has just shifted. I do own a property in Australia, which... Um, I bought when I got here and um, partly to help my mum retire here if she ever wanted to. And then she ended up doing that about 10 years early because she got stuck here during COVID and then never left. Um, so she, I do own a property, but 
that's more now for her to live in. Um, so we've got one foot in the property market. But if we were if we were to buy a house, that's one big thing for me. I'd like I want solar and I want to be able to to be mining. <clears throat> um, and I think by the time we do it, the technology is going to advance so much more anyway. Um, it would be amazing to be mining now, buying buying in now with the the price so low. But again, that's that's getting into fiat mindset. Like I think that's true. If that's you true. Can be, if you can be double dipping and you've got, you know, it doesn't really get that cold in Queensland. But even if we had our miners running and we were harnessing the heat somehow, yeah, yeah, to heat the house on those those few occasions in winter when it gets cold, um, it, there's so many benefits. So, so yeah, benefits. I would like to, but not not currently. So there's there's a company called um, uh, Apollo. So they're Apollo miners. I've got a few of them here, and they're like you can run them. They're low powered. So you can actually run them in your apartment, um, like home mining. Like, I mean, the hash rate's not like an S19 or anything, but it's getting your, your hash rate off zero. So they're always sold out, but I think they've got like a, a, a bank coming through. So there's the guys up in, do you know the Digital Playhouse up in Agnes Waters? No. No, you haven't heard of them? So they're, they're actually on the um, Score Bitcoin team as well. Um, but yeah, they're looking at, at doing some sort of partnership to get that in just to... Like, I think just the learning aspect of learning how to mine, like even if you're not getting the maximum returns from it, this is like a wealth of knowledge you get from doing that. That's it's definitely worth doing. So if you're interested, I can hook you up with those guys. Oh, and... You're going to be my port of call for a lot of recommendations. <laughs> soon. But yeah, the um, it's it's tricky when you're renting, which is what just we just chose to do because of, you know, my partner and I both sold property very close to what we now think would have been the top of the market and it's just yep. like this doesn't feel right like it doesn't feel right to be throwing our money back into property no um so we're yeah trying to adopt that <laughs> good on you no, that's really the good mindset for as long as you're making money then you know with interest rates the way they are you end up or, or the way they're going it, it's not dead money to rent because you're basically renting your house with a mortgage with higher interest rate anyway so. yeah that's what, that's what i'm doing now <laughs> Um, yeah, so, so, uh, moving forward into lightning. So my, my introduction to lightning was a number of years ago with actually a lot of Satoshi and that's still my favorite, like lightning app. Um, and just for onboarding people, I found it really like easy, you know, like, you know, to give people BTC, you're just like, cool. I've just given you your first sats. And it's like, like back in the day you'd be waiting 10 minutes and they're like well what's going on it says unconfirmed like mm. i don't get it now it's just like boom there you go you've got btc and it's like it's kind of magical like they're like what this is, this is amazing um but yeah so i'm putting people with that and then i saw the first time i saw it pop up um you know salvador was like before um B B kelly like you know did the whole thing it was just with the Bitcoin Beach team. So I was like following that story because it was like started with some um, educators, right? So like they went into a school. And I was like, oh, that's that's amazing. Like kind of a, a macro of the micro that we did at my school. as They're doing it like for this community yeah. and created this circular economy. And then it went all the way up to the president. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. And that was all lightning. Like they had yeah. leapfrogged like any on-chain stuff. And it's mostly, you know, 99% like lightning transactions um, over there. So, yeah. yeah, I think lightning's so ex exciting and getting off zero lightning is really important. What's what's your experience been, like your learning journey with, with lightning? So I think my first exposure to it would have been when Twitter introduced it. Um, the, the tip, Twitter tips. Um, yep, yep. So not that long ago, really. Yeah. Um, and then I was on uh, Nat Brunel's course where we had, well, I did the pomp course and then I did Natalie's course as well for B oh, BTC cool. for women. Um, and both touched on lightning, showed us how to set the node up. And I've still got the recordings with the intention of going back to it. Like I say, to set it up. I bought all my <laughs> node parts off of that because I was like, this is great. This is awesome. so cool. <laughs> and I just thought, and it like like you were saying, it kind of feels good. To, to want to contribute to the functionality with Lightning, um, more so than mining for me is a, is a much bigger sort of operation but um, and capital investment at this point. But <clears throat> the Lightning stuff, I thought, well, that's a relatively cheap way to get involved, to learn more, to feel that you're contributing, to also be 
owning your um your channel your your stack and i'm sure you know within time i'll i'll be doing that yeah um, but yeah so twitter was my first introduction to it then i started following um elizabeth stark and then obviously jack mallers with strike that was another big educational moment when he spoke at the conference was it 21 yeah oh, right. yeah that was this amazing. year as well last year and the 20, year. 2020 i think 2020 was the big the big one from memory yeah yeah um, yeah so yeah with strike i think when strike rolls out around the world it's game on like yeah absolutely I, I don't providing people get the education mm -hmm. um so yeah that's i don't know if that answers your question but i'm not i have the node parts haven't set it up would love to um, <laughs> no, that's cool. because, and especially over here i think you know when you look at when we when i was doing those courses and we did the lightning module I, um, someone flashed up a map of the lightning network and there's a yeah. distinct lack down in australia um yeah. so you know of nodes yeah well the trans transactions are just like like it's it's crazy it's oh, it's, it's so it's cool to see stupid. it's like four, four percent a week or a month i can't remember but there was a statistic that at the time i was doing the course which is a year ago now yeah um, there was a statistic thrown out of four percent growth per week or per month either way it's massive still huge yeah um, yeah it, it blitzes like, visa blitzes everything so it's, it's amazing um that's cool what's what's your what's your go-to lightning wallet of choice um i've got a couple actually i was just thinking when you were talking about wallet of satoshi i have that on my phone mainly because um I, when I was down the rabbit hole reading one day, I was like, I wonder who will accept it. And I found a fish and chip shop in on the Gold Coast oh, where okay. I live, round the corner that my mum goes to like every week. I'm like, oh, I want to come with you and pay. Oh, that's awesome. I, I want to pay it with my wallet. But then I got distracted. I couldn't figure it out. But I use Moon Wallet and Blue Wallet. I've got. Oh, cool, cool. Um, just that's so cool. So, so they're around the corner and you can get fish and chips on Lightning. Yeah, I haven't done it yet, and I really want to. I'm not a huge fish and chip fan. I'm vegetarian, but um, <laughs> get some chips. I, I'll eat chips any day of the week. So um, I'm going to go around there at some point. But I, yeah, oh, you have, to, you have to, you have to. But the Wallet I, of Satoshi website. I'll tell you what we should do. Had we a should map. do. Let's let's do this. Go there, and if you can send me the QR code for the transaction, I'll buy you some chips. I'll buy your mom. Oh, some okay, chips. Free chips. amazing. <laughs> Now I'm in. Yeah, because we did we did that actually. Um, my friend Chris was over in El Salvador last year for the um, big conference over there, and um, he went and found a merchant and a t-shirt. And literally, I paid the merchant from here over Twitter. Paid the merchant. And Twitter, bought... even better. It's yes. so cool. It's so cool. Well, like that's this... what they did with the launch, wasn't it? Jack Mallers did the, yep. Yep. from his office in the closet, wherever it is in Chicago, and he he paid for someone's starbucks or mcdonald's in el salvador that's, that's right. so cool yeah it's amazing no, we should do that we should film it yeah let's do it let's do it <laughs> let's film amy getting some chips being a fatty uh, <laughs> being bought awesome. free chips that's amazing <laughs> um, i'm sure what if satoshi's website I, i'm sure the reason i got it was because i saw a map either on their website or somewhere else and it, it had their little it was yeah. a map with their logo everywhere that accepted it and it was actually quite a lot of retailers and, yep and is in this area so yeah it was like, wow, in the app i remember that yeah and they killed it for some reason yeah but yeah no that was that's that's so cool um i wish there was fish and chips here that i could, <laughs> could go on <laughs> there will uh, be there will be eventually there yeah, will yeah. be um so you have multi-sig so getting off zero multi-sig so multi-sig i think is something really important and I, it's getting easier and easier my favorite multi-sig um, application as of late is something called nunchuck Okay. And Nunchuck basically lets you integrate something called a, a, a seed tapper. That's what it's called. Anyway, it's basically a card, and you can tap it against your phone, and that's your, that's your private key. It's amazing. Like I'm thinking, especially for oldies, um, you know, who forget their passwords and forget their 24 wood seeds and all of that. Literally, just a card you can use, and you can set up multi sigs to say it's like your mom and dad or whatever. You can go boom. They do it, boom. Or you can even have, you know, you know, two or three or three or five or whatever. Um, someone over in the UK if you wanted to, and you both have to tap to do a transaction. Um, have you had any any 
um, <laughs> how to play with multi-sig at all? Because, I mean, no. I think it's only gotten easy as of late. I think that's... Yeah, and that that's one of the things that I'm always saying to people is, like, if the speed of progress w with um, software interfaces and infrastructure keeps going at the rate it has from 2017, like... You know, Amber's one great example of where you can buy Bitcoin and how easy it is. It's the same with with Lightning. So I'm assuming yeah. it will be the same with multi-sig. Like my, I, I haven't got multi-sig. Um, it's absolutely on my list. Um, and my go-to would be at this point Casa because I don't, you know, they but they charge a huge fee. But when I think about my situation, I'm an only child. I don't have kids. I'm like, well, someone needs to inherit it and I don't want to lose it. So I, that whole inheritance planning side of things does appeal to me. Yeah. But that's literally my, my exposure to knowledge of multi-sig would be listening to podcasts sponsored by Casa or knowing what they do. There's a really cool app. Actually, we're using it for the School of Bitcoin as well. So like with School of Bitcoin, we want to fund learner projects as well. So basically we've got a pool to dedicate to that and we're going to use a uh, nunchuck for that specifically um but yeah you could download nunchuck on your phone and get your your partner to do it as well and just have a play because you can it's really it's really like really well, i think it's important i mean uh, non-custodial is is a no-brainer now knowing what i know but again for someone just starting when you're still stuck in the old school mentality of how we do things now, um, yeah. it's hard to just, it's overwhelm of information, but yeah, multi-sig again, it, it's one of those things that's just going to get easier. Um, yep. it's just going to, as a result, it's going to get more adoption. Yep. You know, the easier we can make that initial adoption with buying and owning Bitcoin and seeing it grow and, and with, like, which is what Amber makes so easy it's mm. only going to flow into there's I mean, there's so many companies and projects out there working on making this stuff easier. And that's yep. what, another thing I love about the whole space with Bitcoin. It's like people really give a shit about making the world better. So they're building these projects that take away that friction. And a lot of them building it for free as well. Which like is you. Like, <laughs> like you. Yeah. Oh yeah. But there's a lot of people like just building open source software and just like, here you go. It's so cool. So cool to see. But I'll, I'll, I'll send you a link because I reckon Nunchuck's the easiest setup I've seen for a wallet and been able to – literally, you can put, like, your avatar and stuff and connect to your friends and create a multi-sig wallet, like, in a fun way. It's not like, you know, there's a lot of wallets out there. Like, I love, um, like, Sparrow or um, Samurai Wallet, but they're really technical and – scary for people like they open well, and up businesses. Like, uh... <laughs> like it's going to be great for businesses to have multi-sig wallets like oh, and i think that's sure. one of the one of the biggest things like i'm i'm figuring out it's probably going to have to be coinbase app or coinbase's api figuring out a way to get paid in bitcoin for my business and i know that there's plenty of easy ways i could do it and just have a separate wallet but i'm like how can i do this that but if i had a business partner because um, it's i'm just one man band but um if I had a business partner, it's like, oh, multi-sig for businesses. And I think the sooner Jeff Booth was talking about this, the sooner we just get businesses onboarding Bitcoin and talking about the fact that they use it mm -hmm. and not not relying on Amazon suddenly accepting Bitcoin. It's like, if, if, if this is a free market, right? Like that's, that's what right. we all have this vision for, I think, when you fully get the bigger picture. It's like, well, if we just have people adopting it and businesses adopting it and multi-sig and interfaces for multi-sig making that easier, once we have adoption, we don't need the government money. We don't need it. That's right. We've got a new one. Thanks. It's obsolete. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. We don't um, need your E-A-U-D or your A-U-D-D or whatever it is. Or whatever it is. CBC they're coming up with. But people, <laughs> that's my biggest thing. It's like, well, how is this any different? With the CBDC, it's like, oh no, 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 no. it's it, it can't be good. Like, and even just reading like some of the papers like, that, um, like Davos have put out and um, the World Economic Forum talking about like building central bank digital currencies with transaction expiry dates. And it's like, what? So, like, basically, the idea is basically, uh, and I'm pretty sure China's looking at implementing something like this, you get paid you know, for being a good citizen. <laughs> and then um, that that transaction has an expiry date of, say, a month or a year, after which you can't use it. So there's no saving. 
you just have to spend it within that a lot of time slot. <laughs> it's like, and this wow. is the thing. I think it was actually um, Alex Svetsky, Amber founder, like said in a tweet recently, it's like, this is no different to what we already have. Like no. we're already sending fiat money digitally. We don't need it. And that's what people don't get. It's like, well, why, if they say we have to use it, then we have to use it. It's like, no, you don't. No. <laughs> you just don't yeah. adopt don't adopt it. Don't adopt this new system. And and I don't people get people don't get that the extreme threat to their freedom and privacy that you've just described. I mean, we accept it's been such a slow burn that we've just given up mm. that stuff anyway. Yeah. And then COVID came along and I think it's been this it's people a lot more people do seem to be reflecting on COVID and going, Oh, hang on a minute. Yeah. Um, something's not quite right but but don't get it and you know people are too busy with their lives that's right and they're only going to get busier trying to keep up with the cost of living they're getting another job or you know a lot of the masses are and it's they don't get the the seriousness of the issue um and and that that's a that's a it's integrated with the bigger picture with bitcoin and the fiat system but it's also a standalone issue to be talked about you know why why should we be told our oh, like you say, if you're going to choose to put this this collection of dollars into saving, but you go back a year later and it's evaporated because you have to spend it within a year. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. Like who? Like, who came just, up with that? <laughs> or you don't, you know, and they're going to, the, the incentive is going to be dangled that people just won't say no to, you know, the yes. incentive of UBI or, you know, government's handing out money to force you if you want this money you must have it in this currency it's it's just sending the world it's exacerbating so many problems that we already have of people not wanting to work you know which as human beings and then this comes back to what i like to talk about you know as humans we we want to do things we want to grow we want to contribute we want to work we want to be creative but those things don't pay well enough to keep up. So it's easier just to take the government handout yeah. um, and not be productive. And that it's just, it's crumbling society and it's happening slowly, but it's now speeding up. And if they just keep handing out enough money that people can survive not working, well, and I've got one particular example, which I will talk about, it's close to home. Um, <laughs> is you know single parents who uh, it, it's tough i'm not going to begin to imagine what that's like but um i know of one in new zealand and it's like very creative talented person but the government say if you don't earn more than 40 to 45 grand a year you can continue to get this payment of four five hundred dollars a week uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So it's like, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to go get a full-time job paying 90 to 100 grand a year and work full-time and try and make that work around being a parent? Or are you going to take the ability to earn maybe half that from home, working a few hours a week, not really trying, and continue to get four or $500 a week from the government and have a much easier life? Now, you're not going to have a great life as cost of living goes up. You're going to have a fairly frugal you know, inexpensive life, but you've still got a nice life. You've got a, yeah. a hell of a lot better life with a roof over your head and your food and your basic needs more than covered. What, well, why on earth would you go and work full time for a living? It, it doesn't incentivize it, does it? No. At all. And then that no. leads to having way too much time on your hands, which leads to mental health issues, which leads to not being a particularly nice human being and being mm. entitled. And it just everything that's wrong or everything that's not contributing to people being better is being fed by this system. Yeah, yeah. And so I do have a big problem with it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fascinating. Actually, the the irony is like the how I found out or first discovered BTC was. Um, do you remember the the Occupy movement back in like twenty twelve? Occupy, um, like Wall Street and all that. Sort oh of thing. yes, of course. Yeah. So they had had a, a Occupy sort of around the world, and they had one in Melbourne. And I was like, sort of chatting with a friend and we were talking about, um, it was actually like from a, a, there was a film out before that 
um, zeitgeist that sort of went through uh, the monetary system. Yeah. They were like, oh, yeah, like nothing's backed by – money's not backed by gold. Rah, rah, rah. This is crazy. So we're talking about like universal basic income as a solution, right, back then. So I, was, I started researching like UBI and um, then came across BTC. And I'm like naively, I thought, oh, well, this is it. Thinking like, you know, well, government can just give everyone a uh, computer because it was like GPU, CPU, GPU mining at the time. And then that's your UBI. And then we can just like do cool stuff. <laughs> Not thinking that it was like, you know, this, this, uh, it was flying in the face of, of the, uh, of, of UBI completely, but it's, yeah, it's oh, fascinating. Completely. And it's, and, and we're wired to think short term, right? Time preference is the, one of the huge things that comes out of going down this rabbit hole. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's and that is what's happening like inflation is going through the roof so quickly that people are panicking and if you're going to be offered that lifeline and not have to do anything for it in the short term even smart people that are doing well and, and thinking you know doing everything right are probably going to be like well if they're offering it i'm not going to not take it it's like okay take it but just be conscious of what you use it for yeah 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 no absolutely but I think, I mean, it, even like thinking back to those days and thinking about UBI and, and BTC as a solution for that, I think we could potentially still do that now, right? So if, if we had a competent government, we could have solar on everyone's roof, we could have a battery each, and we could have a miner, like for every person in the country. Like, why can't we do that? Um, but it's probably not going to happen, right? Not in this country anyway. Well, as, I mean, not in this lifetime. Um, well, like if you look at El Salvador, that's kind of what they're doing, right? So that they're harnessing the oh, power 100%. of the. It's a slow, it's a slow grind, and I, I'd like to think that beyond our lifetime, it, you know, when if I don't know if you have children, but when you hear people say, you know, you want to leave a better world for your kids, or the other extreme is, I'm not having kids because I don't want to bring kids into this world. I thought, that's <laughs> yeah. bad, but I get it. Yeah. Um, you know the biggest thing you could probably do right now to leave the world a better place for your children is to just buy Bitcoin and hold it and use it and adopt it and learn about it and hope to God that we get onto a Bitcoin standard at some point. Um, definitely, definitely. So uh, what you were just saying about the everybody having a, a node and a the, the, the hardware and a, a being able, able to mine, um, completely lost my train of thought. What did you say? <laughs> having it in well, it's in, solar, in, in, battery... Minor, like why can't that yeah, be a government, government rollout, right? So here's your miner, yeah. here's your solar, here's your battery, done. Because I, I don't know what I don't know what it is, but I think one conversation in, in that is people don't actually want the responsibility. Yeah. yeah. Um it, it's sad and I, I do, you know, I always try and see all the different perspectives and where, where are people at that makes them think like that. And I've got a friend in the UK who does very well and um came into a lot of money uh, for work. Um, I don't know exactly how much, but it was a big deal and I was super proud and happy for them. But the response when I said, are you going to put any, you should put some money into Bitcoin and no idea, no education. This is a couple of years ago. And the response was, I like my money where I can see it. <laughs> and I just thought, fair. It's a fair comment, I guess. but it's, and, and this is the thing. I find that every argument, not even, it wasn't even an argument. It was just an opinion, a statement. And I get it. It makes yeah. total sense. Of course you want your money where you can see it. Yeah. But when you understand Bitcoin, it's like having your money where you can see it in fiat is the opposite yeah. of it being real Yeah, because it ain't yours. <laughs> um, you think it is because it's numbers on a screen, which, you know, Bitcoin shares that. It's numbers on a screen. It's digital. But yeah. that is the thing. It's like people, I like my money where I can see it, but I don't trust myself to remember 12 words or store the password or my keys. And it's like, but uh, once upon a time before central banks got out of control, that's what we did. Yeah. Like it was your responsibility to look after your money. And it's why... Our grandparents kept cash under the mattress, and well, I, was, I was thinking about that as well, actually. So you could could do it. So if you were going to go that angle, and we did have a competent government in Australia, you could do custodial, right? So you could have so, and it would offset inflation like completely. It would get rid of it. So you go all right. You have the option. You can be your own bank, or 
you can you can do it with us. So like have a have an onboarding feature, right? And then I mean and maybe have some education. So it's like cool, be custodial and then push you towards being your own bank at some point. Never gonna happen here, but well, <laughs> you can I dream mean, it's interesting please. that it's language, right? And that's why it's so important to be having these conversations because everyone's mm. gonna hear something different and, and raise a debate or raise an argument that need to be answered to to give that sense of of trust in Bitcoin or faith in Bitcoin that it is the answer. And what you just said before about if we had a uh, competent government, <laughs> it's like, but the problem is, you know, we're fortunate enough. I actually believe we do need some degree of government. Like I'm fortunate and I, I feel grateful to live in a country that's civil to a degree, but you know, it's not being run. We're not in a country being run by drug cartels. Maybe at yeah. some level, I'm sure someone would find an argument that we are, but we, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can relatively safely have a great life in Australia. Um, and I believe I'm kind of with Peter McCormack on this with, you know, having a degree of government for certain things and I'm happy to pay my taxes for that. But I don't think people fully understand. Well, we know the ma most people don't understand. Like, it's not about being a competent government. It's their incentive to make you feel that their choices, again, in the short term, are best for you. Yeah. But as you hear, like Natalie, Brunel talk about, and anyone in the space who does macroeconomics, it's like it's a collective screwed up experiment for 50 to 100 years most recently that every government just wants votes. They just want to stay in power. They can't yeah. do anything about this without committing political suicide, yeah. you know? So it's that it's whether they're competent or not, it, it's just the whole system needs tearing down. Absolutely. Um, or at least the monetary control needs ripping out of their hands. Um, well, and I honestly don't think most politicians even get that. I think they go in with, no. I think a lot of good people go into politics thinking they want to make the world a better place, but they get there and there's some sort of higher power that's almost like a gun to the head, like, sorry, you can't <laughs> do that here. Well done yeah. for working so hard against politics, but that is naive. They don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, yeah, I, I mean, it's silly to sort of label yourself as, as any sort of political party, but uh, like if, if I'm sort of forced to, I like to think of being like a left-wing libertarian, so meaning government's shit at doing everything, so we need to build systems <laughs> to do the jobs for them, right? That is yeah. what's happening. Um, it's just getting people to trust that, first of all trust themselves that you absolutely can handle this responsibility of owning your own money and and custodying your own money or yeah. non custodial whichever that's that's always something that's going to confuse people i think but it's like you know it's going back to the social network example i've heard uh, justin rizvani talk about um with with freedom of speech and his mission with zion or his vision with zion it's like there's a difference between saying we won't censor you versus we can't, can't. censor yep. you. Yep. And if we could only just apply that thinking to banking. So when you're talking to people about your Bitcoin or owning your money in Bitcoin or how this whole monetary system works, this new monetary system works and network will work and does work is uh, a bank can say to you, we won't take your money versus we can't stop you having your money. That's right. Which is happening everywhere. It's yep. Everywhere. But it's, it is. They're, they're lending out your money 10 to 1. Mm -hmm. But they're also, in some countries, just closing the, the gates and the doors and the safes and saying, you can't have it. Sorry. Have it. Yeah, exactly right. And it's like, well, with Bitcoin, you can you can custody your money with someone else and like a block fire or with these platforms that offer you yield. And that is a risk. But if it was decentralized on on systems built on bitcoin they can't so it's it's then it's still your responsibility to not lose it yep. but it can't be taken away from you that's right <laughs> that's, that's right. the difference 100% um, 100% so yeah are you familiar with the concept of nims or pseudonyms uh i know what a pseudonym is i don't know what I'm so, so in, in um, I wouldn't know the context yeah yeah so in uh, so i think the first wallet that sort of came out with it was um, Samurai Wallet. And basically you can create NIMs for different uh, users that are you for different like activities that you're doing. So like 
Um, I don't know. You go to the fish and chip shop. You can use it for that. Right? And then yeah, go on another place. You can use it for that. That that that. So it's it's not one person. It's multiple um, pseudonyms like attached to that wallet. Um, super cool, and it's getting easier and easier to set up. Have you ever set up any anything akin to that whatsoever, or even thought about that as a security method at all in your learning journey? Right, so you're talking about privacy. Yeah. 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 Um, so what you're saying is, let me just repeat this back. This is how I learn. Yeah, if please. You're, so you're saying if someone were watching me versus yeah. let's say comparing it to a CBDC, if someone were watching and tracking my spending, yep. I can go, I, Amy, with my phone can go and use my lightning wallet at the fish and chip shop, for example. And then I can go and use the same wallet in the petrol station. And because I've got different pseudonyms, whoever's watching won't know that both those transactions were bingo, made. bingo. Yep. Right. Yeah. Done. <laughs> There's the difference between a central bank digital currency. Um, so no, I haven't used it, but it sounds awesome. Yeah, um, worth, worth playing I around with. Definitely look at setting that up. Uh, partly, <clears throat> my biggest concern at the moment. Well, not biggest concern, but I don't like the fact that when I do smash buys or big buys of Bitcoin and just pull it off the exchange onto my ledger, that's a very easy transaction to track. And if I keep using the same ledger, I'm not trying to avoid the tax man, but if anyone else were to request my financial records, I don't like the fact that someone can go, well, that's clearly your ledger and you're clearly getting this much Bitcoin and therefore... Yeah. Well, and in particular with Ledger, because it's it's closed source, uh, meaning you can't review the code for the hardware, and um, it's it's a centralized uh, server for it, right? So, like, all your data is going through Ledger's nodes. So it's it's you can actually connect them to to your own node, but we don't know what data they're tracking because it's all closed source, as opposed to something like Trezor or um, like uh, the Coin kite guys have built like the um, the cold cards, which are really cool. They look like a little calculator. There's a bunch of like open source projects, open source hardware that you can get where you, you, you sort of can't get tracked with that, um, or it's it's a lot harder to because it's not it's not through a centralized service. So probably something to think about on your learning journey as well, sort of migrating away from not not to like bag out Ledger or anything, but um, until they sort of open source, um, I think it's kind of worth even diversifying into different different. Uh, hardware even just to learn yeah i had i did have a treasure at one point i just didn't like their interface yeah uh, it's gotten better much better yeah okay yeah. that's um I'd, i'm open to it for sure i mean i understand the principle enough to to figure it out it's just again and this is where the industry anyone wherever they're at you know a beginner especially which i know a lot of people that might consider using amber would be um it needs to be frictionless and easy and that's yep. That's what I mean about all these amazing companies out there that are just working their hardest to to do that with interfaces and software and apps and you know um, accessibility and everything. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, you will be my first port of call again. I know. <laughs> no, I need Where do I go? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll send you a list of stuff to to have yep, a squiz it. Perfect. Um, so yeah, they're finally getting off zero education. So obviously you've educated yourself. You've gone through a bunch of courses. Where's where's your or what's the best courses you've done, and where's the best sources of information that you go to sort of keep learning? Yeah. Um. So I generally I, I do podcasts and audio books. Um. And proper books, I'll I'll go through as well. But it's just a time thing. I'll I'll generally do audio. Uh, Bitcoin Standard uh, was a lot of information to cram through my brain and I'm on my second or third and, and I've started it and then started again because it, it, it is, but it's it's there's no shortcut to this stuff. Mm. Um, you need to put the time in to learn. And I think Bitcoin Standard is probably, the Bitcoin Standard is probably the most condensed you can get it in terms of the full picture like the mm -hmm. history of money, um, the the way humans have evolved over thousands of years. You know, safety has gone into such detail and unbelievable research, which I can't imagine how many hours he's put in. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so just buy the book and support these people because 
they're the ones doing the legwork so you don't have to. <laughs> um, so the Bitcoin Standard, definitely um, multiple podcasts. Um, the courses that I did, um, the first one was, and, and this, I wasn't even a beginner, um, but I did Anthony Pompliano's um, crypto, and it is crypto, not just Bitcoin, and uh, his cohort course that they do. Um, it, it, that's an investment that not everybody's going to be willing to make. Um, I, I've i been investing in my own education and I, I, I sell education as well around multiple things because I believe it's always it always pays off. Um, so yeah, you can sit on YouTube and try and filter through the crap and, you know, but what you're paying for when you invest in education is a shortcut from a reliable source. And I think anyone that's putting that stuff out there deserves to be paid yes. for the time that they've put into it. And I think, again, when you're in the Bitcoin space and you understand free markets and Austrian economics and, and proof of work, you don't have a problem with that. And that's a mindset that I'm a stand for. You know, that's why I do coaching. It's, you know, invest in you first um and that might be money or it might be time but there's no shortcut in success to anything and there's no shortcut in in understanding bitcoin which will result in success financially so podcasts um a lot of the exchanges amber's got some great resources on the website now which weren't there before yeah. um but the Bitcoin Standard, um, Natalie Brunel's podcast, what, what Bitcoin did podcast with Peter McCormack. Um, and even even those guys now are so much further down the rabbit hole of macroeconomics that I'd almost say for beginners, don't start there. Yeah, true. Um, so true. start with this or start with if you're an absolute beginner and new to this stuff, I would say just go to Amber's website and go to the learn section or, yep. you know. Because a lot of the people that I follow, I'm watching them go further and further ahead that I'm losing track with a lot of the, And it's not necessary, that level that level of detail. Um, so it is, like you said, it, it's important that more people get out there with education at a starting point that people can relate to. Um, and Absolutely. I think the environment, the economic environment we're in at the moment gives people every reason to be listening and paying attention because it's directly affecting them more than it was. Definitely, definitely. Well, thanks so much, Amy. This is this is fantastic. Um, where's the best place people can go to, to follow you? Uh, social media, website, all that sort of thing. Um, I'm probably most active on Instagram. Um, I'm kind of gearing up to do a lot more content. So I'm Amy Taylor Says on Instagram. Um, I do dip in and out of Twitter, but I, like I say, it's kind of it feels like the Bitcoin maxi crypto. It can get a bit like toxic. <laughs> um but yeah my website is bugetpaid.com um i've got an email list coming um or i have an email list but i've not added the subscription but instagram's probably the best place to find me um at amy taylor says awesome awesome well thanks very much hey it's nice to meet you awesome chat